You only have one opportunity on any of these routes. Your forearms are swelling, your fingertips are losing grip. It's incredibly high consequence if you slip. You have to push your body past its limits to reach that top. Meet Brian Zarzuela. Wait, Brian, where are you? Ah, there you are. I'm a three-time national champion. I've also won two IFSC gold medals at World Cup events, um, as well as a couple silvers, bronze, and a silver and a bronze at the IFSC World Championships events. And he's competing at the US National Paraclimbing Championships. But let's go back to the start. I knew I wanted to coach Brian instantly. A lot of times when working with people who are, have an amputation or uh, a disability, they climb a little more slowly, a little more controlled, just because you want to be really certain that every move you do is going to be stable. But Brian had this amazing ability to just throw himself at holds uh, in a way that might seem reckless at first, but it's something that allows him to do moves that other competitors simply can't. I saw that this kid has something special. I need to stop calling him kid. <laughs> Brian's climbing career didn't surprise his mum either. Brian dice que dice que cuando los niños están en la barriga, eh, tú sientes lo que van a hacer. Él se movía constantemente, se movía de un lado a otro. Yo sentía para acá, para acá al mismo tiempo, como sentía que estaba escalando en la barriga. So I was actually born with one hand, um, and so this is kind of just how I've been all my life. Él no caminó, él salió corriendo a los ocho meses. Exactamente el día que cumplía ocho meses, salió corriendo y nunca caminó, corrió. Cuando él estaba en el elementary school, en la escuela elementaria, uh, no lo incluían mucho a deporte. Y yo pues, siempre reclamaba y me decían, oh, sí, para la próxima, para la próxima. At the time, I thought, yeah, that's kind of cool. I got a straight A in gym class for doing absolutely nothing. And it wasn't until I was a little older that I understood the negative repercussions that ended up happening on me. No lloraba tanto, pero sí se frustraba. Hay personas que no hacían suficiente por ello y permitían que otros niños, los niños son crueles. I first got into sports around middle school. There was an after school program. They had a bunch of free sports to try, whether it was baseball, basketball, handball, football, you kind of name it. Martial arts, they had it, and imagine having a kid with built up energy for like 10, 11 plus years. Oh my God, I was just like rapid firing through different um, kind of different sports and just trying a new sport basically every other day, it felt like. And then on Brian's 19th birthday, climbing entered the chat. In 2017, I went to a gym down in New York City. And the rest is history. Yeah, no, I was pretty bad when I first started climbing. Oh. I just could not figure out how to get up the wall, and I was super scared of the heights at first, but there was something about the adrenaline that kept just driving me to try it more. I ended up getting a membership through the rest of the summer, and that's basically been it, and I've been climbing ever since. I think if I tried to tally up the amount of hours I put on a climbing gym, I'd drive myself insane thinking about it. <laughs> It'd sound a little bit obsessive. I was pretty insecure about how I would navigate this world with one hand. But I always needed a different adaptive pieces and there was nowhere and ever really there to teach me what to do. And I'm finally lifting and I feel really confident in the gym, but it definitely took a long time to get there. It's very easy to have imposter syndrome, kind of take yourself down a notch in your own head. We're still competing at the highest level. It might look a little different from what everyone expects, but that doesn't change the fact that we're still professional athletes at the end of the day. Whether you're a novice or a world champion, it's a relentless sport. Climbing is incredibly mental, incredibly physical, and incredibly technical. And it's all those three things at the same time, most of the time. Well, I've seen like strongest men in the world come into a climbing gym and struggle because they don't know what they're doing. If you can't do all three of those things, you're not gonna make it as a high level climber. And messing up is high consequence. The potential of falling off of a 60 to 1,000 foot cliff, it's pretty obvious. You can tear muscles, can tear up your skin. It can just beat up your body. So I've personally broken bones doing it. 
But I think one of the things that makes climbing unique is that it's also a slow sport where you actually have time every time you make a move. And so you have to weigh choices constantly because consequence is high. How are you going to manage that? And scoring is simple. Each hold is numbered, so the higher you climb, the higher you score. As you go higher and higher, each move is harder till the last move of the climb, which a lot of times in competitions is going to be after 45, 50 feet of climbing, you're gonna to have to just throw and catch and jump and swing to it at the top of the wall. Whoever's the strongest, whoever's the best, whoever is most composed is gonna be the one on top. If you have any level of imposter syndrome, it goes away when you're on the podium. And I always say that there no are limits that he can achieve, that he can touch the sky with one hand. I think climbing is always pushing me to my limits. Before climbing, I think climbing is always pushing me to my limits. Before climbing, I wouldn't say I was anywhere near as confident in myself um, or in my abilities. I think it's really easy for kids with disabilities to grow up a little bit more shy, a little bit more reserved about what they can do. It's kind of pushed me out of my comfort zone. Ultimately, I'm climbing for myself, but not the me from the present. I'm climbing for the younger me from the past and that little kid who grew up and always wanted to do sports. <laughs>